Hey guys, welcome back. I am here again at the uh, flip project that I've been working on. Back from a short vacation and time to get back to work. The corn is all turning and there's actually uh, combines are, I can hear one running right now actually. Crops are coming out of the field. It's uh, September 30th today and uh, won't be long and the landscape in Iowa will look a lot different. So, and actually deer season opens in a day or two. So that's pretty exciting. But anyway, so I came back, actually ran uh, yesterday. About the only thing I did is I did go to the landfill, got my, my uh, dump trailer emptied up again. And I can see that the heating and cooling guys have been here. It's been pulling duct work out of the basement. I mentioned in a previous video that this thing is completely, all the duct work is pretty much gonna be redone. And you can see he's just now started to get stubbed in. That's a 12 inch line. That's what's gonna be the supply going up to the attic. He's been cutting in uh, some floor registers. I can see in several different places. Um, so that's good. I noticed up here, he's been cutting registers into the ceiling. Actually, I think he's got in each room, so you can see like in this bedroom, we've got a register now uh, above both windows, whereas in the past we had just a, one terrible shared register actually that was shared with the hallway. So that's the case in each of the bedrooms. And like I mentioned before, he's gonna use the old, um, what was a supply, he's actually gonna be pulling pulling air um, from the old supply is gonna reverse the system. So this is the, the chase where that 12 inch is gonna go up to the attic. And I did see, uh, I don't have light up there so you won't be able to see, but he's got, he's got flex ductwork run all over the attic now to uh, supply those, um, these ceiling vents. I think he actually has them hooked up. Yeah, you can see the black ductwork there. So they're actually hooked up. It looks like he did a good job the only place where I've got bro broken plaster is this one here above the stairs. And um, this ceiling and this hallway is kind of messed up anyway with a bunch of old patches. So I was figuring I'd probably just sheet that with uh, drywall cleaning up anyway. So that's not a big deal. But the next step for me is it's time to get this bathroom framed out. Um, I've got Pretty well figured out in my head how I want to be able to do this with having adequate space to come up here. You know, it's, it's a little bit cramped to come up the stairs here, be able to make a turn to get furniture into the bedroom. So I'm going to have to angle the wall so that it's not cramped. Um, but I think I've got a good solution there. And I've got, I picked up the, before I left, I picked up the shower unit. So that's the, that's a 30, I think it's a 38 inch corner shower that's going to go in there. So. I'll show you here in a little bit once I kind of get this laid out and start framing this, what this bathroom is going to look like. Um, but that's going to be a great addition to this house. Big improvement. Um, we'll add a ton of value to this house. The other thing that I did is I did get this uh, door installed. So this is the door that comes from the kitchen area to the back porch. Um, I had to install an extension jam on here. Um, in order to get that to fit that two by six wall. So I did that. Um, I've got some video clips of that. I may, maybe I'll throw a little quick montage together just so you can see how I, how I added the, uh, that jam extension or maybe I'll make a separate video. But I've been, my security feature so far has been this piece of OSB and I've been screwing it over uh, this back door. So I'm going to, I guess first thing I'm gonna do today is go ahead and get a lock set installed on this door so I can actually lock it. And then I can, I don't have to continually screw that plywood, um, you know, up on that door. So I'll get that knocked out and then I'll start doing some, um, some layout for the bathroom framing upstairs. All right, lock set is on. I can lock that door now. So I'm gonna show you guys the, uh, <clears throat> So I want to show you the basic layout that I'm planning on for this bathroom up here. Um, after going round and round, 
a bunch trying to figure out how to get this thing um, to fit in this corner, I think I've come up with uh, what will be a good solution. So just to kind of help with the mock-up, I obviously brought the toilet, brought a toilet up. Here's the shower base that's going in. So this is a, they call a neo-angle um, corner shower. And then over here in this corner where you can see the blue tape, I've got kind of laid out a vanity. And I think I'm gonna have room here to put a 36 inch vanity in here. So that should be fairly comfortable. So everything in this bathroom is gonna be uh, pretty, you know, pretty tight, but I think it should work okay. Um, actually, I think it'll work really well. So one of my challenges that I kept going back and forth, so I, I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to leave plenty of space up here. So as, I, as you come up the stairs, you know, there's gotta be adequate space to, um, not just to be able to make a turn, but especially to be able to get furniture up here and be able to get furniture off into the bedrooms. And the other thing is I'm really trying to save this window. Um, I think it would be nice to have a window in that bathroom. Plus, I've already bought it. It's on order. It's coming. Um, the window that I got um, is actually not this not this full-length size. It's actually going to be about here. So it's a 26-inch window, so it's going to be from about the midpoint up. So <clears throat> the solution that I came up with to make this work... Um, so basically, if I if I had just come straight out from this window and had enough space for the toilet to fit in there, I, I was I was gonna this wall was gonna be running into the window. Otherwise, I'd have to come out so far that I felt like I was really encroaching into the space. So the solution that I came up with is this angled wall solution. So wall's gonna the door will be here by the way. So the wall will come across and I make this slight angle. And this angle will come back into the wall and then it will the new wall will come up here. So the wall will come up right beside the window. Um, and it would be really strange to have this toilet sitting, you know, just sitting in a, in a, in a dead empty corner here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a little short wall here that you can see represented by that little two by four. And that will come up just above the toilet. And then it'll be, it'll just, I'll just build a little angled shelf here in behind the toilet. And that'll all be below the window, so that'll be fine. Get up above the shelf, you'll hit the window, and I think we've got got solution um, to that corner problem. So took a little brain scratch and get that sorted out, but I think that's going to be good. Um, so I just need to kind of work out a few details over here. I think I'm going to probably tear the plaster and laugh off of this wall. I really don't want to do that, but um, in order to get studs in the right place, um, for securing the shower enclosure. I really need to open that wall up um, so I can get the studs where the instructions show them. And the only way to do that is to rip off the lath and plaster. So that's a terrible, terrible uh, messy job and I don't want to do it, but I think I'm just gonna have to suck it up and do it. And I'll have that wall opened up. I can have all the studs where I want. Plus, hey, it gains me, you know, gains me another probably half inch or something going that way in every little bit in this bathroom. Um, I will take so that's the next step I believe but I just thought I'd show you guys the the kind of the basic layout that I'm going for I need to get the lath and plaster pulled off I need to get this base pulled off I'm hoping I can get this base off without destroying the plaster behind it I don't care about this side because the bathroom will all be drywalled but I'd like to save the plaster that is on you know outside of the uh, it's up on the landing outside of the bathroom so we'll see how that goes So it was a little tricky because that, that piece of base is actually clear back in behind. This is where the, where the vent stack is for the plumbing. 
So I had to, I cut that off, but no damage to the plaster, so that's good. All right guys, the lath and plaster is off the wall. If you've never had the joy of taking down lath and plaster, just be glad you've never had to do it. So, um, just a little detail here. I had actually come to the conclusion that I was not going to take down this plaster. Um, I figured out that the wall actually is nice and plumb the way it is, and I figured there's no reason to. I just, when I put screws in the enclosure, it would just get into the, into the lath and it would hold just fine. However, I ran into a little bit of a problem as I was kinda, you know, just checking things out. And this here is, let's see if I can get this so you can see it. So this circle here is the drain on that shower pan. That right there is actually a floor joist. So just by dumb luck or unluck, um, where that shower was ending up, I actually I was gonna be hitting a joist. So now, I think by taking this plaster out, it's gonna allow me, that's about three quarters of an inch or so, so that's gonna allow me to scoot over far enough, just far enough that I can miss that, uh, that joist. And I guess now I've got that, you know, I gained, I gained a little bit. I think it's like seven eighths or three quarters or something like that, which isn't, it was definitely not enough to do it just for that reason, but that floor joist was gonna be a problem. So it's out and uh, now at this point, I'm dirty, <laughs> dirty, dusty mess. It was a terrible job, never had to do it. So I'm gonna go home and take a shower. I'll come back tomorrow and start uh, laying this thing out and actually start framing. Hey guys, it's the next day. I am back to continue working on this uh, bathroom frame out project. So um, I have done a little bit of work this morning. I thought I'd just kind of show you where I'm at. Um, uh, what I need to do, um, so basically you can see where the wall is going to come in behind the, the shower here. This is going to be the wet wall. And uh, I'm using, I, I'd like to use two by six just for additional space, but I'm very limited here. So I'm gonna use a two by four and that'll be fine for that shower valve, I think. Um, what I need to do is, I already got one stud into this cavity here um, where the wall is actually gonna come out. I need to get a couple more studs in behind um, this shower surround where we're gonna actually attach it. And you can see that's, that's my final location right there. And um, I gained, uh, well, you'll be able to see this maybe after I pull this pan back out. I'll show you again, but you can see the original circle there. And I gained, I basically gained three quarters of an inch um, to get to get everything closer to the studs by ripping out that lath and plaster. And I think that three quarters is going to be just enough for me to be able to clear that floor joist down below. It's really going to be tight, but we should be able to get past that okay. So. Um, I just kind of have this mocked up here this morning just so I you know, could see how it's going to look. I'm happy with what we've got going on here. So I think I'm just going to, at this point, put in two studs. Um, these aren't exactly the location that the instructions call for, but that's fine. But I do need one over here on this edge um, for that outer flange to be attached to. And then I also need one 
back on this side over here uh, for it to attach to. So I'll lift this out of here, we'll get a couple studs in, and then I need to come to a final determination exactly what the angles are gonna be for my, uh, for my wall. So we'll get that going too. One of the challenges with working inside this old lath and plaster wall is obviously the plaster, you know, kind of oozes between the lath. That's how it, you know, that's how it gets its structure. So then when you go to stick a two by four in here, um, you can't get it in the wall because you make contact. So I had to actually, had to actually rip these things down so that there's room in there for that thing to fit without, um, you know, button up against that plaster. I don't want to damage it and hurt the plaster on the other side, but just thought to point that out. So before I commit to exactly where this wall is going to go, I thought I'd better decide uh, make sure I had space for the toilet here. And of course, just like over there, it just happens that my toilet uh, flange is going to be hitting on a floor joist. So I've had to shift everything a little bit, which I don't think is going to be a problem. I think I'll still be able to, to make this corner work, um, but I don't have a choice with the floor joist either. I got to bring it, you know, uh, probably like. Oh, probably six inches this way into the bathroom, which really cuts into my space where I need to just bring this corner out a little bit further. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going ahead and identify what the joist was. I drew a couple of little pilot holes here just to make sure it's right on the edge of the joist. And I'm going to pop a hole to the floor and uh, make sure we're good on toilet location. And I can frame, uh, determine framing on this side. And I nailed it. There's the joist right there. So I'm right directly next to it. Should work good. All right, so it took a little bit of finagling to get these angles figured out and uh, get everything situated with the toilet. The toilet is sitting on the hole that I just drilled, so it's in the spot that it will actually be. Um, got the wall figured out over here. Like I mentioned before, I'm actually going to, when this is done, I'll square that up like that. So it's actually a square wall up behind the toilet. I think that'll look better. Um, got everything nice and got myself a few inches over here to the side of the shower so that can get finished off. So I think we're in good shape. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these bottom plates secured. And I've already went ahead and I cut top plates to match these just because I got so many angles and stuff going on here. A lot easier to do that while before these are secured. So I'll go ahead and get these screwed down to the floor and it'll be time to start cutting some studs.
All right, I'm gonna get this top plate in here and hopefully everything ends up nice and plumb. It should. Figure out which side is which here. some screws in and see if we're if everything's plumb. Tell you what, that right like there looks really good. Get that top plate secured to the ceiling, and I start filling in studs. All right guys, so there you go. The bathroom is framed in. I ended up just uh, centering the door here in this opening. I think I would actually like to swing it, left hand swing over here into the shower so that when you walk in, um, you know, you've got, I don't know, immediate access to the toilet and then it opens to the vanity. Um, and then the door won't be blocking the light coming in from that window, but my concern is if I swing left hand, I might hit the doorknob. The doorknob can't hit the glass of the shower enclosure, anyway, obviously. So I'll see how I end up doing that. I might do a right hand, but regardless, it doesn't really matter. It's centered in the opening, and I think that's going to work just fine. I'll frame up this little corner wall. Um, we're probably a couple weeks out now from getting windows replaced, so I'm just going to wait until that window comes out. So um, when he installs a new one, he'll just he'll frame in the size that he needs and fill the rest, and then. From there, then I can go ahead and frame up that little angled um, wall that's gonna go behind the toilet. So the only, really I think at this point, the only other thing <clears throat> that I need to do to be ready for the plumber is I need to get this uh, shower pan leveled. Um, first, I'm gonna go ahead and get the drain hole drilled and then I need to get it leveled. It's pretty good that direction, it's a little bit low in that corner, that direction. And this way you can probably see the bubble. It's definitely low in that corner. So I need to bring that up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some mortar, make myself a mortar bed. Um, technically, I guess you could just shim these, but if you've ever been in a bathtub or a shower and, you're, and it kind of squeaks and squawks, um, when you're standing in it, and if it's a you know it's a if it's a fiberglass 
base shower, that's because they didn't put mortar under it. It makes all the difference in the world to have a nice solid base uh, and to put some mortar under. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I've got a bag, I'll get it mixed up. I'll put a, put a layer in there and then I'll work on getting it all leveled out. First, I'm gonna drill that hole and then, um, and then I'll just let that set up and move on to the next project. some nails that's hard on the bull saw All right, so I decided to knock this, uh, knock that board out of there. Um, so whenever somebody put, ran heat up to this duct, they um, actually cut through a joist here, cut to the top of the joist. So this board was just basically flopping and I didn't want to have the weight of the shower, you know, sitting basically unsupported there. So cut that out. I'll get the, uh, I'll get this vent knocked out of here. And then um, I have to cut this back a little bit further. I think the next joist is right back here somewhere. And then I'll just scab in a piece of three quarter um, subfloor there. That way it'll be supported properly under that shower and I won't have a squishy spot in it. All right, so I got this opened up. I just built a little, a little shorty, uh, little stud wall in there to support the floor on that side. to get that pan set. So I thought I'd show you from down here, down below that shower pan, what it looks like. So here you can see, you can see how I've got it squeaked in just next to that floor joist there. I actually carved out just a little bit of the top of that joist so that there's room in there to be able to um, this nut needs to be, that nut needs to be tightened down. And I think actually, before I set that, that shower pan in the mortar bed permanently, I'm gonna go ahead and install that drain um, coming down there. And I need to get a trap so I can get everything sized properly. So I'm not gonna actually set that in the mortar yet today, but what I am gonna do is so this drain is coming i'm up here um 
It's actually above the refrigerator is where I'm working. So that drain's gonna come in, it's gonna run through that joist cavity into the laundry room, and then it's gonna drop down to the ceiling there. It's gonna come across, and at some point it's gonna tie in over here. So I'm gonna need to get this opened up here. Um, I knew I was gonna need to do this eventually, I just haven't done it yet. So before I mess with uh, sh setting that shower pan, I'm gonna go ahead and get this drywall opened up. And uh, I'll probably need to, I don't know. I was gonna say I may need to cut some out that way too. Um, maybe, maybe not, probably a little bit. We can probably just punch some holes in there so we can get some pipe hangers. But anyway, this section definitely has to come out so we can run that drain <clears throat> up in that uh, joist cavity. So overhead drywall cutting is always fun. So this light here is gonna have to be relocated. I want it to be more centered over the washer and dryer anyway, so that's not a big deal. So we'll get this out of the way. All right, now you can really see what's going on. So there's our drain right there. We're gonna drop down, we'll stay inside this, this joist cavity here, run across, and then we'll drop down along that wall, and then we'll run across, and then there'll be a, um, I'll build a little bulkhead up here in this corner, up here that the drain line will run through. Um, and that drain, so the tub will come across there, It'll pick up the sink because that vanity will be in this corner and then the toilet is going to be um you know the toilet's like right in this vicinity as well so um this bulkhead that i built here will pick up the all the drain lines coming down so i think that's all i'm going to open up now should be good enough for the for the plumber actually i'll probably end up taking out this whole piece of drywall just because it's all I gotta come across and pass that anyway, so I will do that. I'll just cut this and take this whole chunk out, and that'll just be one piece of drywall that'll go up and patch in the ceiling there. All right, so I got my tailpiece cut off here for this drain, and I went ahead and installed some plumber putty on the bottom of that drain flange. So we're gonna get this <clears throat> installed in the hole. All right, good and tight. I'll just peel off the excess plumber's putty here. And what a drain. Before I lay out the mortar, I wanna, I've got a couple random holes here, you know, where I patched where that old vent was. And then there's another, I don't know, knot hole here. So I'm just gonna Throw some cardboard in here, plug these off so the mortar doesn't run down those holes. Good enough. All right, I'm gonna mix up some mortar.
So I don't want to overdo it here with this mortar bed. If you remember from earlier, this 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 uh, floor is actually fairly level. It just kind of tips back to the back a little bit, and there's no reason to build this thing you know way up. So I'm going to try to get just enough here um, that I can get everything leveled out and no more than that. And I did, um, when I had that shower base laid down, I took a, I let, uh, ran a pencil mark around the outside so I know what my perimeter is here. I'm just going to take a trowel and kind of get it kind of get it leveled off a little bit here. This is probably way more than I need. I'll end up taking some back out, but go ahead and work it in. I think I'm going to do a test fit. Let's see what we've got. Let's just show you too. So this this unit has these little feet and then of course all of this you know, ribbing back and forth so these feet will kind of settle in and um, a lot of these ribs will actually sit on top of the mortar. Tell you what, we are really nice and low right there. I'm gonna throw in a couple of these plastic clips just to make sure the just make sure it doesn't move. There's no reason it's not going anywhere, but I'm gonna throw these on anyway while the mortar is soft. Once these are on, I'm going to walk away and I'm not going to touch it for 24 hours. Alright, that's as close as I can get to perfect right there. 
walk away and don't touch it. All right, I think that's a good stopping point for this video. Bathrooms are framed up. Feel good to get that done. Um, plumber is coming this afternoon to survey the disaster that I've created and um, get his arms around what I need to do, which is, it's at this point, really replumbing this entire house. Um, I think they're probably a couple weeks out from being able to actually get started, but he's gonna at least come in today, um, take a look, give me a quote, and so I'll be able to plan on when they can get in here. So that's good. I've got a guy coming this weekend to look at the barn and this machine shed over here. Um, I'm gonna have him replace, fix that header on the barn, um, replace some skylights, do a little bit of tin work on the shed over here, do some stuff like that. So that's coming up. Um, I've gotta get a hold of an electrician yet. The guy that I was gonna use is not interested because I'm so far out in the middle of nowhere, so I've gotta find another electrician. So that's coming up pretty soon. Um, my HVAC guy's making really good progress, redoing all the, all the um, heating and cooling duct work in the house and um, I'll probably maybe next video I'll give you an update and show you where we're at on that hopefully he'll be getting that wrapped up pretty soon um, I'm gonna be I think I'm gonna be moving I need to frame the I gotta frame out those clo that closet upstairs yet actually I've got two closets to frame out so I need to get that knocked out but that's not really super critical I just have to make sure I get that done before drywall um, I've got a little time for that but I think I'm gonna move out here um, in the next video, I've got a bunch of stuff I need to do outside. So I believe I've mentioned to you before these goofy columns that I've got here that are made out of PVC pipe. Um, I've got caps. Um, I need to replace these round caps. Got to replace these columns. Got to get that fixed up. Get the, the paint off. Um, get a coat of paint on those. And then I got to get these steps tore off. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Um, I gotta do some prep work on this porch for my uh, for the siding guy. I think we're probably, I don't know, T minus two weeks on siding and windows. This whole porch back here, I've gotta tear this apart. Um, and then, ooh, I gotta tear this, tear into this door too. The way that door sits right now, there's not enough height to get an exterior door in there. So I gotta rip that all apart and try to open up that frame, make that frame bigger. So. So I can get a door in there like I like I want to. So um, we are. I showed you the other day. They're picking corn. So here is the, the corn field behind the house. It's out. There, still corn over over there. But this all right directly around the property is out. So it looks a lot different, bare around here. But um, that's just a sign that fall is coming. So all this stuff that I want to do outside, I might as well. I think this with a plumber coming in this will be a good time to take a break get this done now um, so I'm not working in the cold plus this a lot of this has to be done before the siding guy comes but uh, that's all coming up next couple of videos so I appreciate you guys watching hopefully you're enjoying so far um, finally making some progress on this thing and gonna continue from this point to move forward and forward and actually uh, make this thing look like a livable house so do me a favor hit the thumbs up button and we'll see you in the next video